Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a 2D clicker style game in Unity and welcome to episode 2. So this time we're going to look at some more UI elements, specifically buttons and how they work, as well as looking at some C-sharp coding. Now in the same way we've inserted this text up here, we can do that for a button. So game object, UI, and then select button. You'll notice when it brings it into the canvas, it has a little arrow next to it. If we click it, we can see a child object is text. Now the way this works is the button is its own element and here the text is a separate one, but it displays what's on the button itself. Now theoretically, you don't really need to have that text if you didn't want it. Unity just brings it in to kind of help you along just a little. So let's start with looking at the text itself and the position of the button. So firstly, we can either select this tool here or we can select this one and we can move the button to where we would want it to be. Just make sure we have button selected because you'll notice if you have text selected, it doesn't move the button, just the text itself. So let's hold control, press Z to undo that. So the button, let's select this tool and we can move it over here and maybe up a little or down wherever you would want it. If we select this one, we should be able to align it dead center. You'll notice that the blue line highlights in the center, meaning that is the center of the screen there. So if we go to the text now and let's change it to say, click me. So it's basically typing over whatever it says there. Font, we don't need to worry about at the moment because it's something we'll import in the next episode. Font style, we can click on bold, italic, italic bold, whichever you want at the moment. Font size, however big or small you want, no problem. Just type in, hit enter. Line spacing, we don't need to worry about because there's only one line of text within this button. Uh, we have alignment here, but by default, it's pretty good in center. Uh, overflows, we don't need to worry about because it is rather small. There's not a lot to this. And color, if we click on the bar, we can change the color. So I'm gonna have it as a very bright red. Obviously, just hold down the left mouse button and move it around to where you'd want it. And you can use this here to select whatever color you would want. It's pretty standard. So let's hit X on that. Head to the button. Let's right click and rename and call it click button. So over here in the inspector panel for the button itself, we have image and button. Now these two things we don't need to worry about up here. We don't really need to worry about this source image because if we select it, we can see we could change it to a couple of different shapes. But for now, we'll stick to UI Sprite and we don't need to worry about the color or material on this. What we do need to play around with is down here in the button. Now you can see target graphic click button image. That's fine as it is because we do not need to change that one bit. Now the normal color represents the color we see it as right now. So if we select this as for example, completely black and press play. We'll be able to see that the button is opaque. Now there is a way to change that if you'd want it to be either transparent or translucent and that is done via the alpha. So let's click play again. Let's click on this normal color bar and we can change the alpha here. You'll notice it's represented by A and it's currently 255. So 255 means it's opaque and zero means it's transparent. Press play when it's set to zero and you can see there is nothing really surrounding it, only when we move the mouse over, which I'll explain in just a second. So if you would want a translucent button, you would set your alpha to whatever you would want. So a high alpha, but not at 255, means that it's not exactly clear, but it's not exactly see-through. So I'm going to set mine to 255, but feel free to set your alpha to whatever you would want. And as I said, when we highlight it, it turns to this color here. So whatever you have set in the highlighted color is what the button will turn to whenever the mouse hovers over it. So for example, if we were to set it to bright red, the same as our text, then when we press play, we wouldn't be able to read our text at all if we go over it. You can probably just make that out because I think the click me may be a slightly different color. But the idea is that whenever the mouse is over, it changes to the highlighted color. So I'm going to stop that by pressing play again. And I'm going to change the highlighted color to, let's change it to a grayish color. Okay. And pressed color means whenever we click on it. So if we click on the pressed color and let's say change it to maybe bright blue color, We'll be able to see when we press play, 
we hover over it, it turns gray. We press it, it turns blue. And disable color obviously means disable whether this button is enabled or not, but we don't need to worry about that at the moment. So you need to work out what you want your colors set as for these particular buttons. So I'm just gonna change it to a green. So I'm gonna have it as a darkish green there. I'm gonna change my text to a very dark green. Very, very dark green about there. And I think I will change my highlighted color to, I think I might keep it as a gray. And pressed color, I'm gonna have as white. So let's have a look what that looks like. Okay, I'm happy with that. So also let's change the size of our button. So make sure we do have the button selected, not just the text, the button. And we can drag to make it as large as we would want it to be. So you can see it's represented on the screen quite clearly. So the button's all great, fantastic. What we need to do is at, uh, rather attach a script to it to actually make the button work. You can't really just have a button like this. Sure, it clicks, but it doesn't do anything. So let's create a script, shall we? In our assets down here, let's right click, create folder. And I'm gonna call this folder scripts. So within this folder, let's right click, create C sharp script. So we're going to be using C sharps in this because I think pretty much every version of Unity supports C sharp. And as of 2017.2, I believe, uh, there is no option to create JavaScript. C sharp is easy to learn. If you don't quite understand anything we do with this scripting, it's available on our website for free. Head over there, download some assets and you can get the scripts. But don't worry, I'll guide you through everything we need to know with these scripts. So I'm going to have this script called um, main button click and hit enter again to open it in either mono develop or visual studio. It doesn't matter which we do it in because the script is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to use uh, mono develop here, but as I say visual studio, it'll work the same. So when we open up a script by default, it will have all of this here. We don't need to worry too much about these at the top using system collections, generic, and using Unity Engine. These just make the script enable itself to kind of recognize what's going on. What we do need to make note of is the fact it says public class, main button click, mono behavior here. This public class name needs to be exactly the same as the script name here. If at any point you change the script name, you have to make sure this public class name is also changed. We also have a couple of options within this public class. First one, void start. Now void start is something which runs only once when the script becomes active. Void update runs every frame of the game while it's active. And you'll notice we have a couple of options here with double slashes. These are just notes. So anything you put after a double forward slash is a note. The script isn't run. It doesn't do anything with that line. So what we'll do, is we will uh, firstly, let's get rid of void update and void start. Let's start from scratch with this one, just so we understand the whole script. So you can delete here and you can delete void start as well. What I will point out is at least in mono develop, if we click here, you can see which curly bracket responds to which one. So you can see that this whole section here is one whole section. So I'm gonna get rid of the notes, void start, so it's clear beneath public class. Now what we need to do is firstly, we need to, let's say, declare a variable. Now a variable is a way of defining what exactly something is, whether it's a number, whether it's a game object or anything at all really. So what we'll do is we will type public and we will define this as a game object. So game object. And then next thing we'll do is the name of it, which we'll just call text box and then a semicolon. So this semicolon means that this line is now complete. We don't need to type any more after. It's just a way of the script recognizing that this line is done, nothing more, move on to the next line. If we go down a few lines, what we'll need to do is declare a function. Now what we'll do with this is the function itself is whatever is in here will occur when we press the button that we have created. And we can do that by typing public void. So void is the way of declaring a function. 
and we'll call this one click the button. So that's the name of this function. And then we open close bracket because, well, we don't need to declare anything in the parentheses here. Open curly bracket. Now, when we open a curly bracket, it means this is the start of this function. So when we go down, this is the first line that will be called when the function runs. And we'll just do something very simple for now. And what we'll do is we'll get a text box to display on the screen. And to do that, we will do text box dot set active. And that's a capital S and a capital A because scripting is case sensitive. And that's one thing you have to be careful of, because if we had a lowercase s, lowercase a, the script wouldn't quite understand what was happening. So within that, we then have an open bracket and type the word true. Because yes, it is true, we want to set active whatever we have set as the variable. So close bracket, semicolon. And because we just want this to do one simple thing, we can then close curly bracket to close that entire function. And now we can save that script. So hold control, press S. Now if we head back to Unity, You'll see down here, you may have a little timer ticking away. That's just making sure that the script we've written is OK. No problems, no errors. So now we need to attach this script to get the button working. And we can do that quite simply by creating a new game object. So game object and click on create empty. Now an empty game object will only have the transform option in the inspector panel. It'll have nothing more because this is something that we can manipulate ourselves by adding our own components. In this case, this component is going to be the main button. So if we drag and drop this script onto that empty game object over here, you'll notice that a component appears called main button click. And that text box we have says non game object. You can see that nothing is attached, but it's telling you what needs to be attached there. Now, the way we're going to do this is if we click on our header here, what we created the last episode, we can use this little tick here to set it as inactive. So let's tick that and it disappears. So on this game object, let's right click, rename, and we'll call it button object. And what we need to do is drag and drop that title text into here. Simple as that. And now the final thing we need to do to get this whole process working is on the button, we need to go down here and where it says on click list is empty, click on the plus, drag and drop that button object into the object it's requesting here. You'll have this no function light up. So if we click that drop down list, click on main button click, which is our script name. And you can see here we have our function that we wrote called click the button. Click on that, and that basically means that this script is now linked to this object, which is linked to this button. So when we press this button, we should have our text appear on screen. So let's give that a go. Perfect. So you can see how the script is working nicely. It worked perfectly, it worked flawlessly. Now scripting becomes very difficult as we go further on because there's a lot to deal with. Sometimes lots of scripts and lots of lines, but don't worry about it too much. Next episode, we're going to look at importing some stuff. We'll probably look at importing a font. Uh, we'll look at some more UI elements, and then we're going to get a bit deeper into coding with some global mechanics. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.